Hello and welcome. It is 9 o'clock. It is the 19th day of May 2021. It is still foggy. I am your grumpy guy to all things gaming, the OGGM. This is a PG-13 broadcast. And I'm drinking Pepsi. Support me, Pepsi. I need a sponsor. And I will sell out. It's Wednesday, that means it is time for the RPG crowdfunding news. And I need a haircut. The following crowdfunding projects are reaching their end and should be ending this week. So it was the last chance to support any of these. So if any of these crowdfunding projects sound interesting to you and sound like something you want to be a part of, uh, check them out. Uh, go on down to your friendly local game store. That's Sess Games Enemy here in Ventura and ask them to look into the product for you and what steps you need to take to support them. Crowdfunding and kickstarting is a great way for small press publishing to get their product out on the market when they would normally have to compete with the big gut dogs like Pezo and whatever. So right at top, of course, I have to once again mention the awful cheerful engine Kickstarter crowdfunding project is going on. Uh, in case it hasn't been mentioned enough, it does seem to be the number one story in crowdfunding. I'm not sure why. It has been in playtest and development for over a year. Uh, if you're a fan of the R Ghostbusters RPG from the 1980s, then you might be um, interested in the awful cheerful engine or ace uh, role-playing game as it is an action comedy role-playing game that uses a very simple system. You can put your character on a three by five card. You can do that with any game. Um, this is not the first time we have heard that Ace has been used as a name for a game. There was a game in the late 90s called Ace Agents. So it'll be interesting to see if those people ever come up out of the blue and say, hey, you're using our name. Uh, we already have some adventures coming out for uh, Awful Cheerful Engine. Uh, we have Spirits of Manhattan, Montana Drones and the Raiders of the Cuddy Shark, Strange Science, and Beam Me Up. So this is a being a huge pig um project that is getting a lot of press i'll be happy when the kickstarter is over because i'm tired of seeing the ads for it uh also grim hollow the monster grimoire kickstarter is about to finish and the product should be on the shelf shortly this is a dark fantasy monster manual type thing set in the world of grim hollow is the third grim hollow product if you're looking for a little darker more twisted take on D, &D monsters this might be something that interests you from atlas game we have magical kitties level up for this is an original system uh, it's uh kickstarter should be ending by the end of this week it's an all ages rpg uh where you role play a kitten going on adventures from Kobold Press, we have for Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, Deep Magic Spell Cards for 5th Edition. Um, I love these. I cannot say enough about this kind of product. Uh, it doesn't matter what game it's for. The 3x5 playing card size cheats are a great product. The, the treasure ones allow you to have a little card with the treasure on it, and you can either give it to the player... When they get that treasure, you can maybe get it back if they stop playing or whatever. Um, the NPC ones can give you a little picture of the NPC, really quickly hold it up. And the monster ones give you, you know, the stat block for the monster on one side, a picture of the other side. And this one, the spell ones are also great because you can quickly reference the spell without having to look it up. Yes, they take up room, but they take up as much room as a magic cards. And you can use a magic binder or whatever to put them in. They definitely make things a little easier for referencing things and plus having a picture. My favorite one, of course, is the treasure ones because you can just give the, the player character, here's a picture of what you found, here's the information of what you found. Yeah, um, doesn't matter what system these are for, I love these. These are, I will never not support the idea of these little cards. They are a great prop addition to any game. From Gaming Ballistas, we have Delve, Delver, Delvers to Grow, Dungeon Fantasy RPG powered by GURPS. Um, so this is, what is this? Uh, this is a bunch of pre-generated characters for GURPS. 
Fast character generation at 62, 125, 170 points plus upgrades modules to get you to the table in minutes. So basically it's um, a system to, of pre-designed tables and prompts so you can have a GURPS character ready to go without wasting a lot of time. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, okay. From Penny for a Tale, we have Necrobiotic, a dystopian tabletop role-playing game. This is an original system uh, where, where it's a translation of an Italian game called Le Ingrangino, L-I-N-G-R-A-N-A-G-G-I-O. It's roughly 200 pages uh, of a game world where you're... People are dead, the government's in control, you're using cybernetics to animate dead bodies to have them do the jobs that the people would have been doing, but they're dead, and oh, do those animated robots have rights? And yeah. Interesting. The art is pretty cool. Could be fun. Interesting sounding name. From Crescent Tabletop Role Playing Games, we have a Kickstarter for Crescent nautical fantasy tabletop role-playing game this world is made of islands and in this low fantasy campaign you'll roll you'll sail between many experiences as you sail around this is an original system with new worlds new ideas if you feel like earth sea or pirates of the dark water or something that you kind of like this might be the game for you it's got a picture with fish and shells and water stuff and yeah it looks nice and pretty From Jessica Crimes, we have Pretentious Games for Villains and Bastards. This is an original system RPG anthology. It's an anthology of nine unique RPGs, each focusing on a different idea of playing bad guys, I guess. So, original system RPG anthology. Its Kickstarter is ending. This looks fun. From Mad Hermit Games Publishing, we have Night of the Sun, a 5e fantasy tabletop role-playing game module for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. This is a 130-page adventure that pits the party against somebody who is animating the dead. Um, so if you're looking for an independent um, adventure to support that deals with the topic of the undead, a very re relatable topic considering Ravenloft's coming out this week, this might be something you want to support. From 2C Gaming, we have Garden of the Giant Returns from Support Robot Bear, Super Robot Bear in 2C Gaming. This is an original system core rule. Uh, this all takes place in a garden. Small animals have evolved and taken charge, live as creatures from bees to bats to frogs as you adventure among 14 scenarios built around wandering around an adventure. So think Mouse Guard, uh, Red Wall, that kind of thing. Uh, from Academy Adventures, we have Academy Adventures 2021 D&D Online Summer Camp, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. This is a online summer camp. Uh, I don't, what do you, how are you kickstarting this? It's already, sometimes I don't understand these. It will cost you $220 for five full games, five full days of gaming digitally, I guess. Um, so it's an online summer camp for your kids. Offers D and D options using role playing encounters and stuff like that to do camp stuff. So log on to Zoom for a couple hours, and your kids get to talk to other kids from all over the world for five days doing D and D and D and D related stuff. Two hundred and twenty dollars. They are crowdfunding, I guess, because they don't have enough money yet to get the thing working. But it, I don't know. Two hundred twenty bucks per kid. For five days, how many hours per day? Oh, here we go. Uh, the sessions run from 11 to 1 or 2 to 4. So, so three hours. So 220 a day per kid for a three-hour summer camp where they get to play D&D with other kids. I'm not sure why these guys need crowdfunding other than maybe they don't have the funds yet to do whatever it is they need to do to make this work magically. Internet, Zoom, Discord, things I don't understand. So, yeah, I think your kids, personally, in my humble opinion, after a year of uh, potting 
I think our kids have been in front of the TV slash Zoom enough, and if they have a chance to go outside, they should do it. So instead of spending $220 on a digital babysitter, why don't you spend that $220 to take your kids someplace fun that's outside where they can actually, I don't know, get exercise. But that's just me. Do whatever you want. After all, this is PG content, not suitable for anyone. That is all the crowdfunding projects that are coming up this week and coming to an end. Of course, the big one is Awful Cheerful Engine. Now that it is officially coming to the end of its Kickstarter, hopefully I don't have to talk about it anymore. Stop advertising it. I mean, I could just say, you know what? I'm not going to mention it anymore. I've already mentioned it a thousand times, but it's like, like you know, it's, I don't know. If you appreciate this content, comment down below. If you don't appreciate this content and think I should be quiet, comment down below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Help me hit 500 subs by August 4th and we'll do something crazy. Till then, I am your grumpy guide to all things crowdfunding. Have a great day. Stay warm, stay dry, stay hydrated, stay ridiculous. PG-13, not safe for work. Get off my land.